Well, it was that the Brits. That's it is Bithel. the Brits. Yeah. It's, it's um, that's interesting. That's an aggressive move by Dylan Fletcher, Scott, and Stuart Bithel. So you've got the two Danes and Britain right down here at the Lured End. Aggressive move. Don't know where Bur uh, Burling and Tuk are. They tend to play it quite conservatively, but this is uh, going to be game on at this Lured End this time. To the extent we can see one of the Danes pulling out of there. Reversing back, getting out of there. But that was a big move by Bithel to come in. Uh, sorry, by Dylan Fletcher, Scott and Stuart Bithel come in there quite late. I think it's setting up quite nicely for them at the Lured End. They are into the final seconds here. Five seconds to go. Uh, the boats that have bailed out, they're desperately scrambling for a gap. You can see them pulling out of that start as these guys pump their boat to leeward, pump it to windward, and we are racing. That is really close <laughs> uh, to the go. But Stuart... Um, Bithel and Dylan Fletcher Scott have had an absolute screamer of a pin and start there, kind of stealing it off the two Danish teams. And we've also got, um, I believe it is New Zealand number one, uh, Peter Burling and Blair Tuke just sitting off their hip. Another great start from those guys as yeah, well. Yeah, that was interesting. Eh? We hadn't talked about Burling and Tuke the whole time through that. But when the, when the gun went down, they played the low risk game, bang, they were there. Uh, so it's Beck the and same, Gun. I stand corrected. It was Beck and Gun. Well, Beck and Gun. At, uh, at number five, so they are really aggressive. Logan Dunning Beck, he's one of the rising stars in the 49er class. He's lived in the shadow of Burling and Took for sure, but uh, if he, he's always fast. So off the line, it was the Fantella brothers, uh, Dylan Fletcher Scott, Stuart Bithel. The, uh, as uh, we just have a bit of a good start by Logan Dunning Beck and Oscar Gunn. Here comes those ever important crosses and it looks like they're going to be able to put away a few of these teams. They've definitely crossed the bow of the Americans and their following pack, but it will be that next pack you can see right up on the middle of the screen that's going to be applying the pressure. Yeah, they look to be bow forward. So the boats that were up towards the committee boat end, I think, uh, are, are quite comfortably in the chance. Presbytek, Kolodinski is showing to be bow forward from Poland. We'll just let it mature a little bit and settle down because the animation does jump around. Bildstein and Hustle are in there again. The density, though, is outrageous. These boats are just within lengths of one another and also tacking and kind of scrapping for a clear lane here. As we come across this boat here, and I can't, it's a, a Dane, it, just tacking, they look real strong. Uh, so to give you an update on where these teams are uh, over the course, you've got uh, New Zealand 1 and uh, Spain 4. They're kind of uh, leveraged up onto the right-hand side, but they're all converging into the middle now. Uh, you've also got Denmark 9, a little bit bow forward in the dead centre of the course. Um, we've also got Australia 66, just to lure of them, and GBR, we saw them on your screen there, um, making that manoeuvre from the pin end, consolidating a little bit, taking a few sterns and stepping out to the right. Yeah, it didn't really play out as strong on the left as it did in the first race of the day. Uh, the, the boats that actually started up uh, in the top third of the line are the group that have pushed forward. Now, I, th I would put that down to pressure. I think there might have off the line been a little bit of a vein that came through the middle of the course that, that nullified the, um, the, the line bias that was there. You've also got uh, Bildstein and Husserl. Those guys have been strong performance. Austria 6, they are one of the furthest uh, right-hand boats, but they're coming into a few close crosses uh, now against the Danish and the GBR team as well. So that kind of places how both ends of the fleet have shown up and they are right there on your screen uh, in the centre. So they've come uh, from the right end. The GBR team, um, you can see them crossing through on your screen. They've come from the left and there's nothing to it. There's nothing yeah, certainly in it. It's a, it's a good cross here by um, Benjamin Bilstein and David Hustle. They, uh, they look good. They look fast. They, they've looked fast the whole week. As we make our way, the th things are just starting to settle down a wee bit now. So we've got certainly that leading group with Needham and Turner again from Australia up there. Bilstein and Hustle, I think they're essentially first and second to bow to bow. Boten and Lopez Mara from Spain also close to bow to bow. It's good to see them back up in the top group because they came in today in third place. So a much more, I would say, on performance result for those guys. 
It's been great following the Austrians out here. Well, I don't know if you feel the same way, but I feel like the boats that wanted the right have crossed to the left and the boats that they started in the left have crossed over to the right. We've seen a real switch, especially from the some of the strong teams in this fleet are kind of changing their mind. Yeah, I, I, I just, the patterning for the day is, is, you know, the 50, I think it's a 60-40 deal. I, I think... 60% of the time or 55% of the time, the right has been really strong. But every now and again, there's there's a, a, a little snippet from the, the left. But um, right now, as we sort of get later in the afternoon, I think it's pretty even over the course. And uh, it's more about who's got a lane to sail and who, who's uh, comfortable not being affected by boats around them. And this top mark will be the teller of all as they kind of converge uh, up the top of this course. We're still only halfway uh, up this course there, but they've seemed like to be converging um, quite early. They're not splitting too far away from one another here. Keeping it quite tight because they are at about halfway um, on this upwind. For me, uh, Bilstein and uh, Hustle look really strong. Um, there is the group now, we, we're getting an idea with uh, Botine and Burling and Took and Molleris from the USA over on the left. So we've been looking at the boats further up the stack and the, the key time will be when they all come back as we're seeing now the uh, Bilstein is tacked to Lourdes and ahead of Burling and Took and to Lourdes again or in really in a compromised position is Molleris from the US and he's forced to tack away. And he does there, yeah. Can't live in the gas of the leading boat. But it's like the Austrians and the New Zealanders are on a piece of bungee and they're just sort of saying, uh, <laughs> you know, catch me, catch me if you can. Yeah. Yeah, if you want to look back at the team of Bildstein and Hussel, they gave me a tour of their boat and we got to see a little bit about the technology um, that they've got and some of the splicing um, bits and pieces that they have uh, on their boat um, to keep themselves going fast and they've really been proving themselves in this regatta. Well, wow, they're they right always there. They were fourth at the pre-Olympic event or the, the Japanese event in, uh, last year, 14th at the Euros. No, that wasn't probably as strong. Sixth at the last year's Worlds, and they have a, a world sailing ranking of second. So they, they are certainly well and truly in that uh, first division of hot teams. Close crosses here. You just saw uh, the Australian team. I think it was um, the the Phillips brothers there just taking the stern of the Kiwis and the Spanish just getting across. A few crucial crosses are uh, still happening as we go up to this upwind. And as I said, people kind of changing their minds and picking a shift here and there. The tax on the 49er, they're just not quite as expensive and it makes the racing upwind way more tactical because if you do get a little sniff of a, of a change in pressure, they can put that tack in and capitalise on nearly every wind shift. If I they think what we to. saw there was a bit of give and take as well. Because the racing is so compressed and close, if, if it's a case where a port hand boat is going through and they are marginal, often the starboard boat will say, I don't want you tacking in my face and there'll be a Go through. You know, go through. Get and out then, of here. then you expect the same. You know, it's a, you've got to live. In, you've got to live in the game, and, and I, I think that's what we saw there. It was uh, a, a case really that the port boat was clear ahead. So, you know, why why make it um, a heartache for them? I feel like the New Zealand team, Burling and Chuk, I think they've had a little bit of difficulty on this upwind. I was pegging them as one of the, the lead boats. Not that they're having, not that they're doing a terrible time, but they're not quite um, right up in the pack there. And they have been uh, one of the more left-hand boats. It's these guys that are just kind of coming up the middle that have just got a bit of an edge here. You can see them just been taking a few um, sterns on this upwind. Certainly the, the boat, this boat coming across and it is, uh, I was looking here, I think it is from Netherlands. France. Is it the Netherlands? Yeah. They look real strong. Lambrix and Van Vucht, those that, guys have had now a... Now they've come from the left, they've had a, a good lane, good angle and uh, they've really uh, benefited over on the left. There's not going to be much in it at this top mark and down to lure to them, you've got the New Zealanders. Warra to ahead and to lure to of Burling. This top mark will be... Look, there's no, no one stepped out, so... They've the, kept each other on a very tight leash. 
on this whole up when nobody is giving anyone a meter but it does look like Netherlands number eight these guys are in a great position um, a little bit bow forwards as they uh, come in on this left hand side it's been quite powerful uh, for them yeah no they've been strong and they went into today into this finals in fifth position and uh, right now they've got a, a, a lovely little buffer over the Danish team it's uh, and, and the Austrians are right in there. That he's been in there all the whole time, Bill Steen and Hustle. But I think there's a nice little uh, bit of leverage gain there for Lamprick and Van Vogt. We're seeing the majority of the fleet now. They're on port tack, so we're seeing a little bit of an advantage uh, to the guys that can be on port tack uh, right now. They've got a nice little angle into that top mark. So we're going to be seeing, uh, it looks like the... Um, Netherlands team here on your screen uh, if they continue they'll just be doing a really short tack and then a rounding it's quite a technical manoeuvre you don't want to wash off too much speed there's that tack there they've got to get themselves right up to speed and we will see the top mark uh, right in the shot they're not far from it there you go quite a short tack and so some of these teams especially the Austrians they are right on it so it's going to be tight uh, as we get around here but they are your first place Netherlands eight really closely followed by Austria number six and it will be Spain 4 and Germany 59 all in one big hustle and that is a great shot there from the drone. Yeah, good good final uh, push to the top mark by that group that came in from the left and for the New Zealanders, they got spat out the back a little bit. They got some fighting to do as the boats stream around the top mark. We're playing chicken here with the boats that have overlaid that top mark. They've got to find a gap, uh, hold on to their nerve and try to get through uh, because it does get super condensed. And see these two boats on the ley line coming up wind. Uh, it's going to be tight for them to get through. They're going to have to do a little bit of wiggling because they do not have rights if these boats come down on starboard. Certainly threading the needle at the top mark if you're coming in on port is, uh, is, is problematic and you are required to keep clear. But it has uh, really been a little bit of a, re, a recalibration here. Burling and Tuka back. Lo, go, uh, Logan Dunning back from New Zealand. He's back, but it's uh, the ever consistent at the front. Benjamin Bilstein, David Hustle are right there. Lamprey and Van Voigt from the young... Uh, Netherlands combination, Schmidt and Bomi from Germany make up that top three. Diego Botin and Lopez Mara. The Fantella brothers are in there. That's good to see them up in that front group. And Wara and Jensen from Denmark make up that top top uh, seven. Uh, Dylan Fletcher and Stu Brithel are back in ninth. So they got a little bit buried after going for that quite high-risk port end start. Um, uh, port end start. Our German team... Uh, Highland plus all those guys have had a really tough up win there as well. They're in 18th position, so we'll mark that in our memories and just see uh, if they can get down on this downwind in better shape and try to keep that as a keeper. Really impressed by uh, Bilstein here and Hustle. I mean, their, their consistency you pointed out earlier, you know, right now they're dropping a fifth and, yeah. and they're up here in second and they'll, they'll push hard here to try and win this one. They are putting together a, just a fantastic regatta and they've certainly got uh, the Netherlands combination ahead of them right in their, right in their gun sights. And there was absolutely very little difference between uh, those guys in their angle coming into the top mark and uh, Burling and Chuk. There was only a, you know, a ladder rung in it. And um, the difference between that, about 10 boats have got in between uh, about a 20 metre gap of, of gauge going into that top mark. And that is how condensed uh, this racing is. We do find it gets a little bit more spread out uh, for the downwinds. It does tend to spread the fleet out. But right now, this is as good as it gets. Well, and it just shows you how, how tough it is when uh, you get in congestion. Uh, there wasn't a hell of a lot between the race, or certainly the second place in Burling and Took, but in that top third of the cor cor course, the New Zealanders got bounced around like playing in the pinball game, and uh, that's what happens, even to the best of them. I mean, there's uh, about 
six seconds between first and fifth right now uh, in that mark rounding. I uh, just can't quite explain. There you go, two two metres uh, between Lambricks and Buildstein and Husserl are trying to close that gap there. I mean, that's uh, you can see them on the ladder rungs on the way down, the difference in colours in the water. That's kind of how we're determining uh, their distance in a straight line into the finish. Obviously, they're doing different angles and different speeds, but it is close. So we're on leg two, bottom mark gate coming up. And uh, it is, it's, golly, it's all on for young and old here. Bill Steen has set himself up here to, um, to take the lead. So the red Jenica of the Austrians, they went round the top mark in second place, but they're really putting the Netherlands combination, so that's the blue spinnaker over to the right, um, the, the advanced blue spinnaker. They were leading at mark one, but I think... It could well be, we, we may well see a lead change here with Bilstein and Hustle. Nice setup. The German combination have got a good roll on there. That's Schmidt and Boomy. And we've got um, also interesting the Spanish team and Denmark 9. Uh, they took a little bit of a dig, uh, an early jibe out of that top mark and they have been going down that right-hand side. Um, and they're condensing now. Uh, they're the boats that are sailing towards you with the two black spinnakers on the corner uh, of your screen. So, uh, you know, they haven't lost any, but they definitely took a, a pretty different track to the rest of these sailors that all continued straight at the top mark. Yeah, you're going to see a lead change here. here In fact, it is. I think uh, both, uh, I think the German combination have got ahead as well. So, just that art of sailing a little bit deeper. Picking your time, picking your time with the gust. Bilstein ahead. These guys will be looking back, trying to spot the Kiwis, seeing how many boats they've got in between because they'll be really trying to find a bit of a tidy gap. We're coming down into the bottom mark now, seeing them jibe and drop to take that left-hand gate uh, for this upwind, favouring yeah. that right side. Yeah, nice, nice manoeuvre, nice, nice rounding. So next, it is Germany. Good, good downwind leg for Schmidt. And perhaps we've seen uh, the Dutch team. There they are, just in third place there, uh, rounding and taking that right. The first team to take the left-hand gate will be the Swiss team. They've had a really good downwind. Schneidner and Kujin, these guys have had an absolute cracker. And they're followed by Boten and Lopez Mara, who took that right-hand track. It's a tough manoeuvre for the boats on the left to, to come in hot and then do a jibe and, and spin around the mark. As, uh, and then on the other side, I think that might have been Burling and Took just ahead of Fletcher, Scott and Bithel. Certainly. You can see that early tack um, from one of those teams. They're going to be condensing with those downwind boats, but just thread the needle through there. And that's just the power of that gravy train, you know, out from those bottom marks. Sometimes it can really pay. Oh, really close there with that downwind boat. Um, <laughs> he's really thrown a spanner in the works by putting the tack in there for all the boats coming downwind. But it does give him a few more options rather than just having to sit and have your angle controlled out of that bottom mark. Well, once you get through and you get through the, the, the boats that are coming down wind, you can actually often it'll open up a, a, a nice lane to sail in. I think that might have been a uh, Presbytec, Presbytec. Uh, that, that actually had to do a bit of avoiding. And GBR also managed to get out of the, the lane of uh, starboard tackers coming off um, the left-hand side looking upwind of the gate. And a bit of a split here, you know, a few of the boats are continuing out to this left-hand side, led by Schneidner. You can see there on your screen uh, the Swiss team as they pop that tack in now. Swiss 77. Oh, a little bit of windward heel in yeah, there. Yeah, just maybe I just looked at the wind speed. It's down a little bit. I'm seeing nine and a half knots now from um, out on the course. Still fully powered up on the trapeze. But both... Uh, Ends of the course are now checking in with one another. Um, the guys that are furthest advanced have both put a tack in, uh, a little step up into the middle of the fleet to keep check on the rest of them. And that was uh, the Austrians number six. They continued, they've done a little step up, but now they're heading back. I think they're pretty confident uh, in that right-hand side. So they've chosen to go bow forwards and lead the way over to that side. 
So after the excitement of the bottom mark gate, they head up leg three. And uh, it is now in the lead it's from Swiss Combination. I know Bilstein back in the lead. Yeah, they're really the tracker right now is really. It, it jumps around a little bit, and, and and that's why with the tracker, it's the averages that we should be looking at, and then we go back to you know the 3D graphic, and we can look out over towards the right. It is the Austrian combination are, are really controlling that group, very strong position, and they've got the group around them really uh, pretty pretty well contained. And, and a lot of the fleet on port tack now, um, they're all choosing to be on that tack and sending it. And you can see that it is Fletcher Scott and Bithel who have taken that first tack, uh, going against the grain a little bit because um, everyone seemed to be on port tack for quite some time. Yeah, I think they might have been affected by, if I look up, it'll be Lamprey and Van Voigt as uh, we look at Fletcher Scott and Bithel coming back on cross on starboard. The teams that took that left-hand mark seem to have um, made a bit of a dent in the fleet. The Fantella brothers, Botten, Lopez, Mara and the Swiss team as well, just inserting themselves into that top three kind of game uh, with a little bit of an advantage out to that right-hand side. Still early days. But this second upwind is brought to you by McGlide. Check out McGlide as an alternative to anti-fouling your boat. We've heard that it's quite performance-based as well and it is pretty much an a adhesive film for below the waterline of your boat. It's coated with silicon paint and it's quite quick by the sounds of it. So check out those guys um, for any of your anti-foul needs. Starting to get the, the late afternoon reflections. The sun, of course, heading west. And these guys are really keeping a close eye on one another. We're not seeing a huge amount of splits. Every now and again, someone will do a small step up or a small check-in uh, with the rest of the fleet. But we're seeing um, these guys all kind of flop onto one tack and continue and then someone makes a break and everyone goes. We're seeing that again uh, with the Spanish sailor uh, making a bit of attack there, Boten and Lopez Mara. Uh, they are, it's a tight leash right now. Oh, it's, it's, it, I think the leading boat, Bilstein and Hustle, they've, they've got a little, a little buffer. But between uh, Fletcher, Scott and Bithel, Schneider, and uh, then we go back to Fantella and Schmidt, and even down to Boten, there's nothing in that. They're all very, very close together fighting hard to try and find a lane. There's a few boats, a, a pack of about three, that have put it right out to the left-hand side over here. They're making their way back in the middle. I, I think they might have jumped a little bit up the leaderboard. They won't be able to top, touch that top ten, but it would be Grogan and Hoffman, Australia 71. I think they've made a little bit of a dent in the fleet by having a bit of a dig um, out from that left-hand mark. Um, again, they won't be um, in the top 10 or top 15, but a nice little jump up for them. Well, it often happens. You're sort of back in the pack. You say, well, pick a side. Let's, let's have, a, have a look. And um, maybe that's what went on there. And it can be a little bit difficult, you know. There's a lot of congestion uh, for some of these boats that are in the pack. You can see there on your screen, these guys are all over one another. Uh, they're always really fighting for clear air and a nice lane on their way up and a few options. Um, but, you know, if you can't break out, you can't clear that air, it's going to yeah, be really difficult. Yeah, you've seen some quite big jumps of uh, boats, certainly in that middle group. Um, from sort of 7th down to 14th and it's who do I dip and can I find a lane and do a, do a nice manoeuvre. Because we were talking about that Swiss team, uh, Schneidner and Kujin, those guys have, uh, you know, they've fallen back down that leaderboard quite substantially. It's just being shaken up with every minute. We might check in with Olivia, um, who's out there on the water. It could be a good time. Olivia, I'm just really curious to see if you... Are you seeing quite big shifts or, or is it an increase and decrease in pressure? We're having trouble seeing it on the screen. Uh, we'll have to try again um, with Olivia. 
out there. But I am really curious because we are seeing such big changes uh, in our leaderboard and we don't get a, as much of a good perspective of it from, from the footage that we're given. But maybe on water, I'm, we would be surprised. I think there's quite a lot happening out there. Yeah, I, I think there's pressure. I'm not sure if there's a lot of angle in it now, but it's generally lightened off. But um, it's be, it's become a little bit funky. But not funky for the race leader, and they've got a good um, a good buffer near Bilstein and Hustle, and Fantella is showing, and the Fantella brothers are up into second, Bithel third, good comeback by Lampre and Van Voigt into fourth. Uh, we are also, um, it's worth mentioning, you know, we're in around that eight to ten knot mark. Uh, that's our wind range out there. And these boats have a real surge, uh, I guess, if they sail into eight knots, the speed decreases like quite rapidly. And as soon as the boys can get both shoulders out and really um, start to flatten out their main, the speed, we call it like that inversion, is quite significant. And so that could be something that's in play. Whilst the wind pressure, uh, the difference isn't that much, we're just right on that cusp where these performance boats have that leap in speed. And so perhaps, yeah, we're seeing um, the teams, especially like Austria 6, uh, with a really good performance, just um, managing to get the most out of their boat as possible in what is like a really tricky wind range for these boats. Well, this is the leading boat in this race. Uh, they've sailed beautifully. They took the lead on the downwind leg with good downwind positioning, good speed. They went into today in second position. They trail Burling and Turk overall by just a couple of points. Long way to go yet in the regatta, though. We won't get into doing the <laughs> mental mathematics until tomorrow night, but certainly it's a very strong performance by Bill, uh, Bilstein and Hustle. And you've got a great shot of them there. They are heading in on Port Tack into that top mark. Uh, and that's as it stands. The only people that could apply pressure to that top three boat would be uh, Fletcher Scott and Bithel uh, and Botin Lopez Mara, who are just the bow forward boats on a pack, you know, one ladder rung down to leeward. Uh, but they've got a nice firm hold. And there is a bit of a stack of boats uh, now lining up, not so much on the, yeah, on the pin, uh, on the top mark ley line on port. Here they go. So that is Mark 3, bear away set. They came in on port. Good, solid lead for Bernstein and Hustle. Definitely looks like it's getting a little bit lighter out there. These guys aren't throwing their weight straight out. Um, but it will be Croatia, 83, the Fantella brothers. They will be in second place getting around this top mark. And it will be Germany, 59, uh, that will come around in third Ah, there's another boat in there, Netherlands. Lambrix and Van Vucht, those guys have also had a great upwind um, in there as well. It will be Boten and Mara uh, getting around that top mark as well as Denmark 9, Woropretsch and Jensen. It is close. Look at that stack up of boats. There's a, not even a boat length in that. Certainly it is uh, that leading group. Well, the group just behind the leaders, is uh, it's impressive. The jibe set. Then it's Burling and Toot coming in there. They uh, certainly haven't had their strongest race. They'll be very conscious of um, trying to protect their drop performance. Right now, they're back in, I think they're back in 10th, so that would, in fact, be their drop. They've got a fifth up their sleeve as their current drop. Uh, early jibe by Bildstein and Hussle. That's quite a, an interesting one. Uh, to see those guys make that break out, but it's nice because they can clear their air. There's uh, no one's expecting a jibe. They can get out and get a bit of clear air, and the rest of the fleet following suit there. Good comeback by the Netherlands combination. They they're obviously going all right upwind in this. Uh, they they got a little bit of a little bit uh, tied up at that bottom mark, but right now they're showing to be in second. But it's very close. It's Lampre Van Voigt right on their tail. It is Semi Fantella and his brother heading down towards the bottom mark, to, oh, heading down towards the finish. Yeah, and they look like it's going to be a really long port uh, jibe for this downwind, and they've decided to hit it quite early, uh, heading out 
over to that left-hand side. There are a few boats that have continued to carry on straight. Uh, one of them is Swiss 77 and also uh, our defending world champions, New Zealand 1, Berling and Chuk, haven't quite put that jibe in yet either. So we'll be applying pressure from a, from another side. So it's a little bit of uh, a little bit of tactic going on here. The there's a cross coming up, so down to, this is Fantella's jibing just ahead of uh, Lamprec and Van Voigt. And then the yellow spinnaker will be, I think it is uh, Dylan Fletcher, Scott and Stu Brithel. Absolutely textbook placement of that jibe there, enough space for them to pull off a nice uh, leisurely jibe, get themselves up to speed, and it will be a pretty uncomfy uh, position for Lambrix and Van Vuk to sail. And also for Bildstein and Husserl, there's a little bit of pressure applied uh, if those guys move any further forward. Yeah, I think the leading boat is he's so far forward, and you can see the advantage lines there. They, um, they will certainly be getting the wind ahead of the force day of the Fantella brothers because of the effect of the speed. Apparent wind gets dragged a long way forward. They get a lovely low angle down there too. They're just sailing a few degrees lower uh, well, than the rest of the pack. Well, they can actually put the bow wherever they like with, with that amount of separation. Uh, the Swiss Team 77 and New Zealand 1 have made that jibe back in, but it doesn't look like they're going to get um, any significant gains on the fleet, but they have had a, have tried to apply a bit of pressure. Big, uh, big distance separation between the... The Americans, Burroughs and Kiss and New Zealanders on that group that are ahead of them. That could very well be close to the last jibe and in for our race leader. So this is Bilstein and Hustle. They have sailed a flawless race. They were second at the first mark. They took the lead on the downwind and really from there they've just not put a foot wrong. It's often the case, isn't it? Someone, one of these strong teams gets in the lead. It is, uh, you know, one, once they can close the game down, and we saw it in the previous race for the New Zealanders, and we're certainly seeing it here from Bilstein and Hustle. They're comfortable. Real comfortable. And, and, and of course, the Fantella brothers, or Simi Fantello, a gold medalist in the 470 class. He's won the 49er. World Championships in um, Fantella won that in 2018 and uh, he's certainly showing his class so they uh, right now are in second from Croatia as we head this is Fantella's actually come at Bilstein on mm. this downwind mm-hmm I'm not sure. I don't think they're in uh, in danger, the Austrian combination. But it's a there's a Simo jibe. So this is they're being pests. You know, they're just buzzing around, waiting for well, someone to make a mistake. And it's really on the Austrians here. Yeah, and you throw throw enough jibes at them, they might screw one up. They yeah. might have a bad jibe. Then you can pounce. Yeah, and we know these guys have a, a huge amount of uh, experience, uh, you know, just generally in fleet racing across uh, a number of boats. And you can see, you know, a bit of that experience. They're just chipping away, seeing, feeling it out, seeing if they've got any room to pass because there's not that big a speed differential in this stuff. So you really have to wait um, for something to happen. But have a look on the water. You can see it. The guys are starting to bend their knees. It is getting so super light. Uh, my wind reading is 9.4 knots, but my guess is we're down around six or seven knots here um, watching these guys bend and and it is becoming a little bit of a speed gain now because uh, it's tricky to keep that rumble on in this lighter condition. Yeah, you can, they're certainly not powered up in mm -hmm. the, this dying afternoon breeze. Bill Steen will be saying, where's the, fin where's the finish? <laughs> Wish it couldn't come, come to sooner. When's it going to come to me? The first two boats have cleared out from the 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 rest, it looks like uh, they should lay through here. The, certainly the first, those uh, three boats of Bilstein, so that's Austria, Croatia, and even Stuart Bithel. He's on ley line as they come through. So it will be Austria taking this one, a well-constructed race. Absolutely, and they, these teams are dropping a third, you know, and that's another win under their belt. You cannot fault their performance so far. They are so consistent and just fast, both upwind and downwind, and not getting into any trouble off that start line. 
yeah, very impressive to um, consistency of performance over so many races. Next, coming through, it will be Vantella Brothers. Yeah, a nice performance for them, those guys too. They had to work their way up through the fleet. And it is going to be close... Uh, coming in here from third. You've got um, the GBR team really trying to soak down. Is it enough? I think it will be for those guys. They will be in third place. And a few guys coming in super hot into that uh, boat end. Super hot, I say. It's still quickly light there. But there is the Germans, uh, the Spanish team of Botten, Lopez, Mara and Denmark 9, Warro Pritch, Jensen uh, also getting around that um, finish line as well. Really condensed there. Yes, it, it is. And then we just look for the rest coming through. We've uh, we've got Presbytech, Kolodinsky, Schneider, and Barrows and Kiss coming over the line. 